underway. Really very little breeze to speak of as the game begins and it'll be a touchback. So here comes Riley Leonard. Their second year starter. Just three touchdown passes. It's unusual for a man of his talents to have more rushing TDs than touchdown passes. But their team likes to run the ball at the end zone when they get down close. They have 18 rushing touchdowns, most of the ACC. Very physical football game. One that's going to be determined at the line of scrimmage. Strength versus strength. Rush defense for Louisville, and obviously what Duke's been able to do on the ground all year long. They open with Jordan Waters, their leading rusher at running back. Louisville crowds the line of scrimmage. Waters trying to get outside, gets very little. Tackled by Stephen Heron, a transfer from Stanford. There are transfers all over this Louisville team. Gain of two. And it's Brian Parker, the redshirt freshman who's in at left tackle for Barton. He started the game against Notre Dame when Barton was unable to play in that one. Scott Elliott is the center. He's been out the last couple of games. Short pass dropped by Jalen Calhoun, who was wide open cutting across the middle. So important for Duke all game long to stay in manageable third downs. This is an excellent pass rush for the Louisville Cardinals. Gave so many fits to Sam Hartman in Notre Dame, so you got to stay on schedule. As you can see, Mike Elko doesn't love the start so far from his offense. He's done a tremendous job very quickly turning this program around. They were three and nine the year before he arrived in Durham. Third down and eight. They move the tight end Jeremiah Hazley. Leonard was looking in his direction. Now he takes off running. Looks healthy there. Ran well and went leaping over a would-be tackler for an 11-yard gain and a first down. Chased out by Gilbert Frierson. And a great job moving in the pocket. You see Jelani bringing a lot of pressure there against Justin Pickett, the guard. But how about Riley Leonard? That right ankle is clearly feeling much better than it was a week ago. He's a terrific athlete, was a great basketball player in high school, and he gets smashed back at the 30-yard line. Eight-yard sack. Just right over the middle, working against the center. Scott Elliott just pushing it all the way back as Jared Dawson made the play. Dawson made just three tackles all year. He's been hurt. They think he's very talented. And he's already made his presence felt. Loss of eight. Leonard given plenty of time against the four-man rush, and it's incomplete. Trying to get it to Samir Higgins with Storm Duck, a transfer from North Carolina. In coverage, Leonard started the first five games of the year, injured in the last minute of their first loss of the year against Notre Dame, did not start against NC State. Henry Beelan did. They beat the Wolfpack. Riley returned last week, played most of the game, left in the middle of the third quarter when he aggravated that right ankle. He wanted to keep playing, but Mike Elko said no. Jaquez Moore, the running back. Jordan Moore, the motion man on third and 18. They're trying to set up a screen. It's complete, even though it might have been deflected. And Moore is dropped for a loss. Minus four on that play. Just a great job there by Louisville defensively. They are so active and so athletic. As you see right there, as the ball is tipped by Riger. It's a heck of a catch, by the way. But a great start for the Cardinals on defense. Porter Wilson, terrific punter, four-year starter, Duke fourth in the country in net punting. Kevin Coleman, the return man. And he's down at the 29-yard line, 51-yard punt and an eight-yard return. So Jeff Brom, the head coach, calls the plays for Jack Plummer in his first year here at Louisville, senior from Gilbert, Arizona. Transfer from Cal. He played last year at Cal, played four seasons prior to that at Purdue for Jeff Brom. We'll tell that story as we go. 
off a bad performance last week at Pitt in the loss rainy and cold conditions through two interceptions one was a pick six was sacked four times they run the option to start it is Jawar Jordan the big playmaker at running back and a good run they're going to spot him out just short of the first down at the 37 yard line a gain of about eight. You can see the electric speed though of Jawar Jordan. His absence was clearly felt against Pitt. Kind of deflated the entire offensive unit. Just open field speed that very few in college football have. One of the best running backs in the country. And he has elusiveness to go with the breakaway speed. He's one of those big playmakers. He leads all players in the country with 70 plays, uh, three plays from scrimmage of 70 yards or more. Carried twice early against Pitt. Just didn't want to keep going on the wet field with the bulky hamstring. And they really missed them. They had to throw it 52 times as a result. Chris Bell gang tackled at the 47 yard line. Hard earned six yards for the sophomore wide receiver. So much of this Louisville offense is really predicated off the run game but Jack Plummer's a very streaky player so getting some completions early could certainly help his confidence. They fake the run. There's Jamari Thrash far and away their leading receiver. He has the first down in the Duke territory at the 44 before driven back. 40th catch of the year for Thrash. That's 24 more than anybody else on their team. Good timing here on the throw. The ball's right on the face mask and you can see Thrash who's really played great these last couple weeks becoming a real go to weapon for this offense and a guy that can take over the game if you let him transfer from Georgia State where he was first team all Sun Belt last year big hole and Jordan needed to make one more man miss and he was going to take it all the way that hamstring looks fine that's 19 yards for Jawar Jordan and a great job by Dwayne Martin too. You see he's lined up at fullback number 45. He goes across hits the linebacker and seals it right up the middle. As Jordan just accelerates so quickly into the secondary and a good open field tackle because it would have been a touchdown if he didn't make it. Kevin Coleman. Stacked up after a short game. So we talked right off the top, Greg, about the ability to make some big plays, and they've had a couple of double digit plays for Jeff Brom. He's such a great offensive mind, did an amazing job at Purdue, and so creative with how he really highlights the strengths of his players. He understands that Jack Plummer's a great deep ball thrower. They devise a passing scheme that highlights that. See how much of a slasher Jawar Jordan is. And He's done a great job really playing to his player strengths. Out wide and caught in bounds inside the 18 yard line a little bit short of the first down thrash again with Al Blades in coverage the transfer from Miami. Gain of seven will be third down and three impressive opening possession for Louisville the eighth play of the drive upcoming. There's Brian Brom younger brother the head coach. Who's the offensive coordinator? Jeff calls the plays with plenty of input from Brian. They put Joshua Black now in motion, the backup offensive lineman. Jordan did not appear to get to the first down. Driven back by Terry Moore. And as always, there are multiple Blue Devils around the ball. So a fourth down call for Brom. And no hesitation from the head coach. They're going to go for it. And now the officials are stopping the action. Might be to check the spot and see if Jordan had the first down. The ruling on the field, the runner was short of the line to gain. The previous play is under further review. By Mike Webster, the replay official. Jerry Magalanis, the referee today. Here in Louisville, Duke and Louisville just getting started. The way they reviewed it, the play stands as called. Jordan did not get the first down, so it's 
Fourth and inches. They have Isaac Garendo, the backup running back, was more of a power back in in this short yardage situation. Louisville just five out of ten on fourth down. They were stopped in a crucial situation early in the third quarter with a seven point lead at Pitt last week. Plummer, they shove him. He's every bit of 6 5, and he gets the first down. Jeff Brown was kicking himself for going for that fourth down last week at Pitt early in the third quarter with a seven point lead. He thought it turned the game around, Greg, but no doubt you go for this one early in this one. Absolutely, and you see the surge too. Great second effort there from Plummer and a good push from behind from Garendo. They have Brian Hudson at center. He's outstanding, but he's been battling a knee issue the last few weeks, limited in practice. Hey, coach it. Coach it. Jawar Jordan back in at running back. Midway through the first quarter now. Jordan. Jordan. Touchdown. What an effort. Just an excellent job out in front, too, by the tight end, number 85, Kariski. Held up there about the three-yard line, but you look at that offensive line all come crashing down, pushing Jawar Jordan across pay dirt to find the touchdown. Just a great effort there from the entire Louisville offense. Michael Gonzalez in particular, the left guard with the helping hand to the goal line. Extra point good by Travelstead. Jawar Jordan's 10th total touchdown of the season. That leads the ACC. The coaching staff was a fine wide receiver for his brother Jeff, now the head coach. That was great. You saw on the sideline. Of course, Brian is the youngest. Jeff and Brian, two outstanding quarterbacks here at Louisville. Travelstead's kickoff is a touchback. Here's Matt Berry. Sean McDonough, good afternoon. Speaking of special teams, I have it for you in Notre Dame Pitt. Poor tackling, better running by Chris Tyree. Longest punt return for Notre Dame since Golden Tate in 2009 against Pitt. Notre Dame leads 7-0. Also, Kansas is up on Oklahoma 32-27. We'll keep an eye on the 3-30 window for you in the studio. That KU game delayed for a while by right. weather. Second possession for Duke. Down seven to nothing. Leonard on target. Jordan Moore stopped short of the first down. And we don't want to shortchange the other member of the Brom family, Jeff's son Brady, also involved in the football program. He's a freshman here at Louisville. They are a football family, man. It's fun to talk ball with those guys. Leonard looked one way, throws over the middle. Jalen Calhoun has the first down. Blue Devils out to their 46. Jalen Alderman, the middle linebacker, made the tackle, a pickup of 12. Talking with offensive coordinator, he said, Kevin John, he said, we really have to kind of mix the tempo. Go fast and then slow down and then kind of ramp it up to kind of catch Louisville a little off guard. So mixing tempo a little bit, the quick passing game working here early on the second drive. and. Staying on schedule is of the utmost importance for this Duke offense. Jacques Moore stopped for a loss. Led by Jeff Clark, part of a deep defensive line. Coordinated by Ron English. Loss of one. They do line up quickly. Will they snap it quickly? There's Ron English. His defense has been very solid. They've held their last three opponents to under 300 yards of total offense and to under 100 yards rushing. Leonard on target. Calhoun took like a pretty big hit at the 46 yard line, but it's the first down or just short of the first down on a nine yard gain. Cameron Kelly delivered the hit. 
Normally here in third and short, you'd use Riley Leonard legs. But with that right ankle being a little bit banged up, will they be as willing to go with the design quarterback run here on third and short? It's Moore up the middle. And he's stopped short of the first down by Mason Rager. And that's one of the things that Mike Elko told us last night. He said last week with Riley Leonard, they knew the quarterback run game wasn't going to be a big part of their offense. He had just one carry. But the reason he decided to take him out of the game, and it's Jacob Monk, very important right guard who's injured. Said when he couldn't protect himself anymore in the pocket as the quarterback, that's when he needed to come. You're too kind, Matt. Fourth down and a yard. Jacob Monk walked off under his own power, but they're two best offensive linemen not on the field for this play. Jordan Waters, the running back. They're five out of ten this year on fourth down. Fake by Leonard. Wanted the tight end and goes down. And they turn it over on downs. Back at their own 49, Ashton Jelani was in pursuit of Leonard, who went down for a six-yard loss. Tried to go with a little misdirection to get Hazley out in the flat. The tight end thought he might have had a chance if he got it, would have gotten rid of it immediately. Instead, Leonard tries to stop his momentum, puts that left foot in the ground, and slides out from underneath him. He can't corral it, and Gelati drops him for a sack. A huge stop for Louisville's defense. Well, they're without their primary tight end, Nicky Dalmolin, out due to injury. Hazley's a converted linebacker who's had only four catches all year, though they think he's starting to get the hang of it at tight end on first down. Speeding ahead, Jordan. And that's seven more for the transfer from Syracuse. It's not often to see this Duke defensive line getting pushed off the ball. It's been a really impressive start so far from Louisville up front, giving Jawar Jordan plenty of room to operate, and you see the surge that he can create and the momentum he can create after contact. He's already up to 55 yards rushing on six carries. Jack Plummer was three out of three on the opening touchdown drive. Plenty of room for Jordan. Flag down. At the 38-yard line, near side of the field, Dorian Mausi, the leader of the defense at linebacker, Holding made offense, the tackle. Number 68, 10-yard penalty, second down. And they're going to get Michael Gonzalez here as he tries to get up to the second level. He's engaged with a linebacker. Looks like he's with Trey Freeman there with the left hand, grabbing that right shoulder of Freeman. It was actually the head linesman that made the call, and he's getting an earful from Jeff Brom. Didn't like that he called it on his left guard, Gonzalez. Big call. Brings the ball back to midfield. Louisville on its first possession went 72 yards in 10 plays. Plummer, wide open receiver, and a first down. Josh Lifson, the tight end, just his fourth catch of the year. They don't throw it much to their tight ends. That's a 19-yard game. And a great job off play action. When the run game's going, obviously there's so much the defense has to account for. Full flow by Duke going from right to left to stop Jawar Jordan. They boot Plummer out to the right. Throws a little bit high, but Lifson makes a nice catch. And they have a fresh set of downs inside the 35-yard line for Duke. Garendo transfer from Wisconsin couldn't break free no gain on the play It'll be second down and ten Jordan came in averaging 7.43 yards per carry third in the nation behind Marshawn Lloyd of USC and Bucky Irving of Oregon. He's averaging better than that today, 8.1. He's on the sideline for a moment. 
as they spread the field with five receivers. One of them open at the 30 yard line. It's Kevin Coleman. And the crowd likes the effort after the catch. He got very close to the first down. Tackled by Brandon Johnson after an eight yard gain. You got to think here for Louisville, based on how they handled the last drive, probably two downs to get it here. Duke so far has had a difficult time up front stopping the run, so I'd be surprised if they didn't go with something downhill in the run game, and if they're short, likely tee it up again on fourth down. Jeff Brown playing without Renato Brown, their starting right guard. He was injured while warming up in their last game at Pitt and is out for the year. Here's Jawar Jordan. Touchdown. <laughs> 23 yards, his second touchdown of the quarter. And he has 80 yards rushing already on eight carries. Jeff Brom said they needed to get yardage in chunks. That's their offense. And they're getting several double figure plays to open this game. And a big hole early for Riley Leonard and the Duke Blue Devils. Travelstead adds the extra point. This is just really bad numbers for Duke. You see three guys on the left side of the offensive line. Look at all these defenders on this side. As a result, you're going to see the cutback lane. No problem there, as you can see the tight end, Kuritsky, coming across, blocking the end man on the line of scrimmage. And then you have Jawar Jordan in one-on-one -on -one in the second level against Jeremiah Lewis, where he's going to win that race every single time. As you take a look at the progressive pylon, Kim, a great shot of it. Another example of the open field speed for Jawar Jordan. Mike Elko, let's go. Boy, that's unusual. They're so sound, so well coached on defense. And that alignment that you pointed out looked like a problem from before Louisville even snapped the ball. And it might have been something that Louisville saw when they got in that formation in the past. Hey, Duke's short on numbers to the left hand side. So might have been something they diagnosed earlier in the week and clearly took advantage of it. Four double digit plays on offense already for Louisville out of the 16 they've run. Terry Moore bringing back the Travelstead kickoff stacked up at the 21 yard line. Here's Molly. Sean Duke right guard Jacob Monk came out of the injury tent and jogged back and forth on the sideline, practiced blocking and nodded. I saw no limitations in his movement. I'm told he will return, so Duke gets their most experienced and versatile O lineman back in this game. Playing without Graham Barton. We talked to Kevin Johns, the offensive coordinator, last night. He said they are the two guys, Barton and Monk, who make the offensive line go. Both super experienced, combined 89 career starts. Bucks played nearly 3,500 snaps in his career. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number four, kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the end of the play. First down. It's on Maurice Turner. That's potentially a pretty significant penalty. Duke hasn't really been able to manufacture a whole lot. Obviously here in the first quarter of the game, and as you can see there on the sideline, Grabbing the jersey of the Duke Blue Devil defender, Paulus Cook, and pulling him down a little late as he's trying to explain himself. His coach just shakes his head, saying, You can't do that, man. So Duke down 14 to nothing in the final minute of the first quarter. They have zero yards rushing on six attempts. And they're a team that leans very heavily on the run. And Leonard goes down again for the second time. Ashton Jelani. Duke had given up only five sacks all year coming in. Few is 
best in the ACC. And then watch how Jelani engages with Horny Brook initially and then beats him with speed around the edge. Riley Leonard tries to buy some time, time out for but just not nearly time. enough as Jelani makes another big play in the backfield. And Jacob Monk is down again. As they tend to him, we'll remind you that ABC has a Pac-12 matchup tonight in prime time. 7.30, Colorado at number 23, UCLA. Deion Sanders' team, the talk of college football at the start of the year when they were 3-0. and They're 1-3 and since. UCLA 5-2, and two, trying to become bowl eligible with a win tonight, playing excellent defense. So Monk walked off. Under his own power, he's a Stanford, he's a Duke man. There's the records of first-year head coaches, including Deion Sanders. And it's Jeff Brom leading the way at 6-1. and one. Stepped into a decent situation here, Greg. I mean, this is a team that went to a bowl game last year under Scott Satterfield. It wasn't a total rebuild. A lot of new faces playing pivotal roles. He's got to play at a remarkably high level. Leonard takes off running and gets back to the 38 yard line, a seven yard gain on what will likely be the last play of the quarter. Louisville controlled the first 15 minutes. Jawar Jordan, three sacks for Louisville in that first quarter. Duke had given up five all year in their first seven games. Uh, one play where Leonard went down on fourth down, scored a sack, deep throw on third down and eight. And incomplete in the direction of Jordan Moore with Storm Duck in coverage. And now Jacob Monk is heading to the dressing room. He's gone down a couple of times. His dad, Stanley. Mom, Shireen, his brother, Miles, behind his dad. All concerned, understandably so. Stan was a terrific running back at Duke in the 80s. Jacob grew up a big Duke fan, dreaming about playing at Duke, following in his father's footsteps. Said, my dad is very passionate about football and Duke University. Bomb of a punt by Porter Wilson. A little too long. 62 yards into the end zone. All season long, student sections across the country are competing to be the Taco Bell Live Ma student section of the year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. I think they'd be a little bit disappointed with this crowd today. They're expecting over 55,000. It seats just under 60,000. They don't have that many here today. It was a rainy morning. That might have kept some folks away, especially the opportunity to listen to Greg McElroy and Molly McGrath today <laughs> on ESPN. Jack Plummer, they run the option again. Maurice Turner back to the line, and that's all. He got the bulk of the action at running back last week, last game two weeks ago against Pitt when Jordan went down early and had a 81-yard day. You would imagine that the end of the last drive for Louisville you see Jawar Jordan's had a heck of a start to this game already 80 yards averaging 10 yards a carry you would imagine the Duke and their defensive staff burn some chalk because they have to find a way to stop the run a good start there on first and 10 it was Joey Gatewood who went in motion the former Auburn quarterback and it's Maurice Turner with the catch weaving his way for a first down after a pickup of 11. Jack Plummer now six for six for 59. Just about everything going right for the cards. And just a good decision here from Jack Plummer. That's kind of been his knock a little bit. He'll force the ball every once in a while. Has had some turnover issues in his past, but that time you see all those Duke defenders dropping deep. You take the check you down underneath, and your running back makes a play for you to give you a fresh set of downs. Coach Brom says Plummer is streaky. And that's certainly been, as you said, Greg, his history. Had a mammoth game earlier this year.
It's Boston College. Turner runs again for almost eight. Plummer threw for 388, five touchdowns and a big win against BC. But as we mentioned last week, not his best. Some key turnovers in critical situations. Yeah, and that's really the key. They have so much explosiveness offensively. Even if you just take a short throw, some of those guys could take it the distance. No need to force it downfield, but that's something they really focused on over the bye week. They bring a blitz from deep. Turner ran away from it and got nothing. Driven back by Aeneas Peebles. That was a tough loss two weeks ago at Pitt. They went in there 6 and 0. Oh. Ranked number 14 off a big win here against Notre Dame. And they outgained Pitt almost two to one. But four times inside the 30 yard line, they came away with zero points with three turnovers and a missed field goal. Yeah, just really struggled when they got in plus territory. And obviously, the turnovers were backbreakers. Also, gave them a couple big plays defensively that was uncharacteristic in the first six games of the season. And they went into the bye week, as Jeff Brom said. It's a long two weeks when you. Come off a loss into the bye. Here's Isaac Garendo. So they continue to move with Jordan on the sideline for the moment. First down. And Dorian Mayusi, the linebacker, kind of runs inside to try to create a bit of a stunt. I think that like Duke probably thought that that was going to be a pass play from Louisville based on tendencies and based on the stunt they just ran because there was nobody there between the left guard and the left tackle. And it was a nice pickup on the ground. Wayne Martin checks in to the backfield. Six double digit plays already for Louisville. The ball came out late. Looked like he was down. Duke thinks it's a turnover. Haven't heard any whistles. The officials are marking it as down. Ruling on the field, the runner was down before losing possession of the ball. Second down. That was a wild little sequence right there is see the contact and clearly there is Garendo's elbows on the ground before that ball is dislodged. No doubt. No doubt about that <laughs> actually hit against Eric Miller's right tackles shoe that kind of kicked that ball out. Play fake plumber throwing for thrash in single coverage and it's incomplete. The First incompletion of the day for Louisville. Here's Molly. Well, Sean, hungry is the one word that Jack Plummer used to describe this Louisville team, stressing the loss to Pitt is, quote, not who we are. Ahead of the bye, he spoke to the team, told them this is not a break, this is a rebuild. He said the facility was packed with players morning and night, and they're out to make a statement this week, proving that that win over Notre Dame wasn't a fluke. They can contend with anyone in the country, and you can see that hunger early in this game, guys. Indeed, you can. Plummer's been sharp. Jordan's had a few, a huge first half. Interesting that he hasn't been in there for a while. Low throw and an incomplete pass. Tried to get it to Chris Bell with Al Blades in coverage. But this is something that Tyler Santucci, the new defensive coordinator, has not seen much this year. Defended passes by the corners that they feel so great about. Chandler Rivers on second down on the double move and then Al Blades on the break up there to force the punt. Brady Hodges is the punter and he's the backup punter. Jalen Calhoun the fair catch of the eight yard line. 40 yard punt you're watching ESPN afternoon college football delivered by no problem for Ladd McConkey. He goes 42 yards for the touchdown Georgia on top 10-7. Exciting action in the top of the rankings today around the country. This is a rank against rank matchup. One of only two today, Oregon and Utah the other. Louisville leading 14 to nothing. And Duke starting from its own eight. Jaquez Moore to the 12-yard line. Josh Minkins, the safety, made the tackle. Just 33 yards of offense for Mike Elko's squad. Notoriously, only six yards on the ground, too. They have to be able to run the football, take some of the pressure off their offensive line of protection.
Jordan Moore, the motion man. Tough to tell if that was a busted play. Leonard running well. And you would know his ankle was not healthy if you watched that run for a 12-yard gain and a first down. Yeah, especially knowing it's that right ankle, too. That's what's been bothering him. See him put it in the ground right there and get vertical. That was Time probably the, the healthiest he's looked injury. since the ankle injury with the ball in his hands in the open field. Jarvis Brownlee starting cornerback is injured for Louisville. Transfer from Florida State. We'll step aside with 927 to go in the first half here in Louisville. Jarvis Brownlee walked off the field. He's been playing through a foot injury. It seemed like that was the problem again. First and ten for Duke. Riley Leonard has rushed for 12 yards. Going to be better than that. If not for the sacks. Jacquez Moore spun down by Ramon Perrier after a five-yard gain. Trying to go quickly now, see if they can establish a bit of a rhythm. Just 50 yards of offense on 18 plays for Duke. Leonard, four out of seven passing for 27 yards and the three sacks. He's their leading rusher, six carries for 12 yards. Give it a nice pocket. Now pulls it down and runs for a small gain. Good tackle by Mason Ryger. Looked like Leonard was going to get the first down. Instead, he got four. They'll need two more. Great play by Ryger there. They've been running the ball a little bit more efficiently here on this drive. And it looked like the last time, or at least the play before, when Riley Leonard kept it, he really showed a little bit more acceleration than we'd seen in several weeks. So maybe they get back to doing what they normally do in third and short, go some quarterback run. Well, the straight ahead running looks fine from Leonard. Third down and two. They're at their own 33. And the pass is caught, and a big game for Duke. Jalen Calhoun across midfield. An 18-yard gain to the Louisville 49. And a great job here. They get a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Mason Ryger. That's a defensive end against a wide receiver on a double-move route, a little whip route inside out. So, so difficult for a defensive end to change direction that quickly. That was well-designed by the OC Kevin Johns. Jarvis Brownlee back in at corner. Good hole on the right side and weaving through it, Jacquez Moore. Cameron Kelly made the tackle, a pickup of six for the junior from Live Oak, Florida. Coming off 110 yards rushing at Florida State last week, his career high. Duke doing a lot of looking back to the sideline, getting a quick shot of what Louisville is going to do defensively and making an adjustment after they take a picture of the alignment. Six and a half to go till halftime. Flag down and they stop the play for a false start against the Blue Devils. False start, offense, number 53. Five yard penalty, second down. Brian Parker, the red shirt freshman from Cincinnati out of St. Xavier. Yeah, you'll see he just flinches a little bit there right before the snap. Obviously working against Ashton Gelati. That'll make you flinch. I'm about to say, <laughs> totally understandable. It's a tough, tough task for Brian Parker, the red shirt freshman, filling in for Graham Barton, the guy that's certainly going to be an all ACC contender. Big shoes to fill and a tough assignment. First penalty assessed to Duke today. It's been a penalty free game. Two flags enforced against Louisville. Leonard, again given a pretty good pocket, but couldn't find anybody. Well, he takes off running. And Mike Elko must hold his breath every time he does. A three yard gain. Quincy Riley ran him out of bounds.
Don't see a flag on the field, but the officials are having a conference back behind the line of scrimmage. William Thomas, the umpire, in a conversation with Jerry Magalanis. Now the center judge, Larry Hayes, involved. And there is a flag. It's actually lost against the yellow in the logo there in the center of the field. Right next to the L. And During the run, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number 77. 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage, second down. Justin Pickett, who's been a backup much of the year, he started the last couple with Elliott out at center. He's been on both sides at guard today, as you can see him just kind of throw down the defender and the think umpire. That's the I don't think that was the penalty. They said after the play, and the play was still going, he throw him down during the run. He's having a conversation with the center judge now, probably trying to get some clarification, but either way, that's a back-breaking penalty to kind of kill a drive that had some momentum. Huge penalty. They had some momentum on offense. Now they're facing second and 24. Seventh play of the drive. They've had the ball for more than four and a half minutes. Leonard stepped up into the pocket, and it's incomplete. Deflected, and it wobbled down short of Jalen Calhoun. Jermaine Lole got a hand on it. They have a lot of talent up front, deep and talented along the defensive line. Yeah, I mean, you go through there too deep, it really should be more like a three deep. They'll play 10, 12, 14 guys in the front. They rotate them constantly to keep them fresh throughout the game. But what's amazing about it is there's not much drop off when the starters come out and the backups go in. It's a very deep and diverse group. Not many plays in the playbook for Kevin Johns for third and 24. Leonard has been having difficulty finding open receivers. They keep it on the ground with Jordan Waters. Tough run, and then he got walloped at the end of it at the Louisville 48, nine yards short of the first down. He got 15. They got hit hard at the end. The penalty by Pickett, a killer. Back-to-back -back penalties. You have it at second and four. You're across the 50. You have some offensive momentum. And you get a false start on Brian Parker, then you get the 15-yarder on Pickett that stalls the drive. Can't do that against top-end competition. Third punt for Porter Wilson. His 44th career game as the Duke punter. His 44.3 career average, best in school history. And this is a good one, well located. At the 11-yard line, caught there by Kevin Coleman. 4.38 to go, first half. Louisville the ball. And a uh, I would claim that as a partial stunt. <laughs> Kansas is very good. Excellent. What a coach Lance Leipold is. Jawar Jordan back in. And he gets 11, picking up right where he left off. Let's go back and look at the penalty against Justin Pickett because it was huge. You see him throw down initially, Time out for defensive but it's injury. right there where the umpire felt like that was over the top. Hmm. Working against Des Tell and kind of gave him a forearm shiver into the back, and that was ultimately what was called. There's an injured Duke player, Trey Freeman, who's their leading tackler for the year. So a timeout with 4.23 to go in the half. Let me show you what goes on behind the scenes when making a shot. All right, Matt, we look forward to it. Here it's 14 to nothing, Louisville. They have the ball with 4.20 to go in the first half. Each team with all three timeouts. Here's Jawar Jordan again. Or a yard and that's all we want to go back to this play and bring in Matt Austin our referee because obviously it derailed the Duke drive Matt what's your opinion 
Well, I understand what we were talking about off air is that the, the second act by 77, the hit in the back wasn't that much. But if you go back and look at the throwdown, I would have liked to have seen a holding penalty called on that in the first place. I think the umpire saw it, decided to pass on it, then saw the second forearm, said, nope, that's too much, <laughs> threw his flag. I see. All right. I'll let you get away with the hold. <laughs> There's only so much. We're not going to let you give a minor cheap shot in the back if there is such a thing as a minor cheap shot. Here's Jawar Jordan again. Here's the question I want to ask you, Greg. Jawar Jordan not on the field at all the last possession for Louisville. You're up 14 to nothing. He's been on fire. Your offense is on fire. I know they probably just want to give him a series off, but you have the other team on the ropes, it feels like. Wouldn't you have left him in and try to bury them? I, I would have. I, I completely agree with you. He's got the hot hand. They're on their heels. Already surpassed the century mark. He's averaging 10 yards per carry prior to the last couple pickups. I mean, I think that's an opportunity to really, really kill their will. And instead, they went with the backups for very little game. They wound up punting for the only time in the half. <laughs> Terrific effort after the catch by Jamari Thrash to get the first down with a 12-yard pickup. They're just continuing to play this off coverage. Of course, we've referenced Earlier in the ball game, Louisville is a big play threat just about every time Jack Plummer drops back. So they're trying to keep it in front, but Thrash doing a great job after the catch there, but kind of rolled up at the end. Well, that's not Duke defense either. I mean, they have three guys right around the ball, couldn't get them on the ground. Finally, Anthony Nelson, the Hartford transfer, did. Thrash on the slant. First down. Down to the 33s where they're going to mark it for a 20 yard gain. They are really rolling offensively. A little RPO this time. See the safeties staying a little bit deeper. You hit Thrash on the slant with a full head of steam, and he could have kept his feet. He might have been off to the races. Here's Jordan. Down to the 30. Three yard gain. Louisville won't be in any hurry. And. Uh, Thought perhaps Duke might use some timeouts to try to get another possession in this half. Yeah, I thought maybe right here under under 90 seconds. That's where you start to consider it. But kind of on their heels as Elko really prides himself on how he manages the game. His defense is really struggling, and I'd love to try to preserve some time to maybe steal some points. Ran the play clock down to seven. A pump fake. Plummer got away from trouble and wisely threw it away. RJ Oben had the pressure. And he's very familiar with the Louisville football program. His dad, Roman Oben, was a star here at Louisville, both on the football field and in track and field, and then went on to play 12 years in the National Football League. He's a special young man, and this whole defensive front, they've had their hands full. Already today, haven't had many opportunities to rush the passer, but Oban, he's the guy that you really got to account for at the end of the line of scrimmage. We talked to Tyler Santucci last night, the defense coordinator said, We need to dominate on the defensive line, and we should. That pass is incomplete. Very tight coverage by Al Blades on Chris Bell. And the ball's thrown just a little bit too far upfield. It's really well covered by Blades. A little contact there at the top. Louisville fans probably wanting. A holder, a pass interference, but Blades continued to play through the ball and just lodges it at the very end. He's been a nice pickup there on the perimeter for the Blue Devils' defense. And then they brought in three key transfers to bolster the secondary. Travelstead, a 47 yard attempt. And it is good. Travelstead, one of only four in the country who is both the place kicker and putter out of 130 FBS teams. Now a quick word from Verbo. I'm live on the patio of this Verbo vacation home. It's recovery time after a hard fall win tonight. It's a good thing there's no host at a Verbo, so you don't have to worry about some stranger asking to join your ice bath party. Back to you. Marty Smith can find a party. <laughs> he is the party. And it's a party here. Nice bounce back for Louisville after the loss two weeks ago at Pitt. 
Jeff Brom told his team it's all still ahead of us with an eye toward playing in the ACC championship game. Travelstead will kick off with 49 seconds to go in the half. Terry Moore is the deepest. John Tavis Robertson also back for Duke. And it'll be a touchback. The NFL countdown crew has you covered for week eight. Sunday, 10 a.m., Sunday countdown, and Monday at 6 p.m. with SVP and the Monday Night Countdown team. Both can be seen on ESPN and the app. Then Monday Night Football caps off your week eight in the NFL. The Las Vegas Raiders in Detroit to take on the Lions, hosting a Monday Night Football game for the first time since 2018. Raiders three and four, the Lions five and two, trying to bounce back from that one-sided defeat at Baltimore last weekend. Now let's see how Duke plays it. They've done very little on offense, just 93 yards here in the first half. Four-man rush, and they still pressure Leonard, who spun away for a moment and then fires it away. Desmond Tell was putting the pressure on. They just have not done a great job in protection so far against a really athletic and dynamic group up front. Just not enough time for Riley Leonard to really survey the field. And when he has taken off, there's been a little space, but not a ton. There are Rushing aggressively, but falling back quickly enough to drag him as he takes off. Jacob Monk on the sideline. Their starting right guard played center as well. Graham Barton, their outstanding left tackle, hasn't even dressed. They're without their two best offensive linemen. One of the reasons why Leonard's been under duress throughout. He got it off that time to Jalen Calhoun for a four-yard pickup. Jermaine Lole put the heat on. Duke hurries to the line. They have all three timeouts left. Third and six. Low through and a catch by Calhoun, at least for the moment. The Louisville defenders signaling incomplete. Ball was diving in a hurry. Oh, no. Ooh, as you can see, that ball does go through his hands and it does hit the ground. Touch the ground, that's fine, but it has to be in full control, and it doesn't appear as if Calhoun was able to reel that one in before making contact with the dirt. Well, they haven't changed the call yet, and there is a Duke timeout, but I'm sure they're taking a look at that in the replay booth. An impressive performance so far for Louisville and a Duke team that just can't find its way right now on either side of the ball. Yeah, struggling. I mean, Louisville clearly coming off the bye week, there was a sense of urgency that they wanted to play with, and they played with it really on both sides of the ball. They've been explosive, running the football offensively, and then the defensively, play, man. It's under further review. They have really pinned their ears back and made life difficult on Riley Leonard. If you look at that replay one more time with Calhoun, Trying to reel it in, got his hands on it initially, but it's right there where it collides with the turf and continues to move. Makes me believe this call is going to be overturned. Looks like they're already starting to head back to the previous line of scrimmage. That'll wipe out a 19 yard gain. I would think now with 14 seconds in this field position in the struggle to block that uh, Duke might be content now to get to the half. Yeah, but, I mean, they're going to have to punt it here. Yep, that's going to be the problem. And they're, I would imagine Louisville now probably gathering together, assuming this is naturally going to be incomplete. Probably thinking about what do you do from a punt block standpoint? See if you can't come after it and steal some more points before the half. Do you have any guess as to why this is taking so long? I do not. <laughs> it seemed pretty cut and dry to me. Of course, if it's called a completion, it has to be indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt to overturn, but I feel like we definitely have that. After further review, the receiver did not complete the catch. The ball hit the ground. Incomplete pass. It will be fourth down. 
Please reset the game clock to 17 seconds. And now Louisville could get greedy, perhaps. Correction. 18 seconds on the game clock. I think you go all Thank out you. block. I mean, right now, a bunch of Louisville defenders up there and see if you can't block this punt. It's going to be really important for Porter Wilson to get this thing off quickly. Kevin Coleman back deep, transfer from Jackson State, and played for Deion Sanders last year. Low snap, but Wilson handled it. Coleman tackled immediately, very well covered by Dukes. Jalen Stinson. 49 yard punt. And Jawar Jordan's been electric here in the first half. First play from scrimmage, you just see the speed on the perimeter, a little speed option. You grab the defensive end and you're off to the race. This is really nicely done, too by the center, Brian Hudson and Dwayne Martin. They're crisscrossing in the middle on the ISO and getting him north and south vertical. First touchdown, showcasing the power. Some help from his friends, pushing him across the plane and then showcasing the speed on his second touchdown, beating Jeremiah Lewis to the pylon. Now in the half, Jordan's fifth 100-yard rushing game of the season. Out of eight this year for Louisville, here's Molly. Coach, what are your shots and continue to pound away in the run game? Charlie Ham kicking off for the first time today for Duke. Line drive kick, no return from Isaac Garendo. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, Duke head coach Mike Elko confirms that their right guard, Jacob Monk, will not play in the second half. Uh, he is their most experienced O-lineman, and their left tackle, Graham Barton, also didn't even dress today. So they're down two of their best starting O-linemen in this game, and his message to that group at halftime was, you're capable of so much more than you're showing today. You need to get back to your identity, win the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, and he told his team, dig deep, start blocking better, and show some toughness. Guys. It's Jawar Jordan at running back to open the second half. Sidearm throw made necessary by the pressure. And Jack Plummer's pass incomplete. Today's game track brought to you by Papa John's. Just about total domination by Louisville and three sacks of Riley Leonard in that first half. Duke had yielded five all year. Plummer goes under center. Jawar Jordan. Just a continuation of the first half. So much of his yardage before contact. He just has so much speed, too. I mean, you watch him on tape and you watch him on television, and yeah, you, you know he's fast. You could, you could see that. It's very clear. You see him in person, man. It's, it's really remarkable just how explosive injury. he is. And it doesn't even look like he's trying sometimes, and yet nobody can catch him. Dorian Mausi, one of the leaders of that defense, the injured player. In the first half, Jordan had 106 yards rushing. 82 of those came before contact. It's remarkable, and this is a really good, really good Duke defensive line, too. So taking that into account is, is pretty remarkable. But when you're on the perimeter like this, I mean, this is just a great misdirection. You get Josh Lifson out in front. There's nobody there on the perimeter because so much of their yardage came downhill situation there in the first half. Now they're starting to work it to the perimeter and obviously one for one as far as finding success. Mousy trotting off will take a timeout. Back in Louisville, Dorian Mousy ran off the field, looked. Looking at a replay, it was a left foot problem, but he seems to be fine on the sideline. They don't want to play without him for long. He runs the show on the defense, according to Tyler Santucci. Nick Morris Jr. has come in for him. Redshirt sophomore from Fairfield, Connecticut. First and 10 after a 10-yard gain by Jordan. Looked like he might be dropped for a loss. He turned that one into a gain of five. 
Louisville has had 10 plays from scrimmage of 10 yards or more already and we're in the first minute of the third quarter. Just remarkable as as you see the offensive coordinator Brian Brom of course Jeff Brom's the one actively calling the plays but heavy involvement from his brother Brian they got the run game going. Out wide to thrash. Stacked up by Chandler Rivers. Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic. They're brothers. And Jeff's considerably older. He's 52. Brian is a 38. You know, Jeff's an intense guy on the sideline, very serious, fiery. Brian told us yesterday he's totally different away from the field. And we saw that. You know, he's a fun guy to talk to. Great family man. But Brian says you don't have to know how to uh, talk to your brother <laughs> talk to the head coach when you're offering suggestions and that sort of thing. Quick screen another good call thrash again and it was interesting he said Jeff Brom is not one of those head coaches just kind of calls the place he calls the plays but when the ball goes to the defense he's involved in the defense and Brian Brom basically scripts the plays for the next possession on offense or at least gives him suggestions about I think here's what we should run. The next time we have the ball. It's really neat to, to hear that the Jeff Brom has that kind of involvement going back and forth as there's an injured Duke Blue Devil. It looks like it's Al Blades. So we'll let you finish your thought when we come back. Lots of people down on the field today on both sides. 17 nothing Louisville. In the back in the late 80s with Jeff as the quarterback. He was Mr. Kentucky in football as was his brother Brian. Years later. This is a Louisville family to the core. We talked to Brian Brom yesterday. He said, yeah, I always thought it was just a matter of time before Jeff would be the head coach here. And he is back at his alma mater, one of 19 head coaches in FBS leading his alma mater's football program, Jawar Jordan. Straight ahead for a first down to the 37-yard line. You know, we asked Brian Brom yesterday, well, who was the better quarterback? And he said, well, <laughs> I'll leave that for others to decide. And he paused and said, but you can go look at the numbers. And I think Brian knew uh, the numbers would support him. <laughs> well, Jeff's 5,400. Passing yards, 38 touchdowns are in the top 10. Brian Brom was a second-round pick of the Green Bay Packers. Jawar Jordan. Al Blades is back in the game after going down moments ago. Brian would say, you know, he, in his defense, he did kind of suggest that it was a different era when Jeff was playing, so the passing stats wouldn't be too gaudy, but he said the era wasn't different enough to justify that being a real legitimate conversation. Well, uh, <laughs> Jeff was two time team MVP, bounced around the NFL for a while. He's a three year starter. That quarterback, they were both outstanding players. Here's Jack Plummer scrambling for what looks to be a first down. It is to the 25 yard line, chased out by Wesley Williams. A great job here by Plummer. The four man rush, nobody really there on the edge. They do have Mayusi, who's back in the ball game. But he gets beat to the edge as he was in a spy situation and couldn't make the open field tackle. Louisville had four possessions in the first half. If you take away the kneel down on the last play of the half, they had two touchdowns, a field goal, and punted only once. And that one punt was on the possession which Jawar Jordan did not participate. He runs for seven more. Just amazing how much space there is between Jawar Jordan and the closest defender is Riley Leonard looking on. There's nothing more demoralizing as an opposing quarterback than seeing your defense traditionally so good against the run getting gashed the way they're getting gashed right now. That's a pretty lonely feeling on the opposite sideline. Duke didn't seem like they were really lined up some movement along the line. Jordan doesn't need any help with misalignments. Finally, Terry Moore made the tackle. 11 more yards for Jordan and 149 for the game. Yeah, number 40, Ryan Smith, is in the backfield. I mean, ready to make a play way behind the line of scrimmage. He's unblocked. And Jordan immediately puts that right foot in the ground, makes him miss, gets vertical, and then breaks it back out to the outside. I mean, this guy is just unbelievable. 
Career high surpassing the 143 he had in the win here against Notre Dame on October 7th. 33 20 victory over the Irish. 3 0 at home this year. Dropped for a loss. Maurice Turner by Wesley Williams. Loss of three on the tackle by the red shirt freshman from Gainesville, Virginia. That was just a broken play right there. The left side of the offensive line. Willie Tyler was running out downfield as if he thought it was a screen or something and Wesley Williams just shot there in the backfield and made the play. Wesley Williams according to Tyler Santucci the defense coordinator naturally gifted he's going to be a special player and play inside or out. He's 280 and the coach said he moves like he's 230. Very bright future they believe for Wesley Williams. Pressure and down goes Plummer. Well time blitz first sack of the day for Duke courtesy of Ryan Smith his second of the year. And Ryan Smith comes right off the edge and you're going to see the right side of that protection just slide down and they were kind of not on the same page. It looked like Maurice Turner tried to save a life but he couldn't get there in time. As several Duke defenders there in the backfield to drop Plummer. Seven career sacks for Smith, the senior from Ackworth, Georgia. Third down and goal. Jack Plummer in the Cardinals at the Duke 18 yard line. Taking time off the clock here in the third quarter with a 17 point lead. Maurice Turner. Maurice Turner gets some help. Takes it down to the three, and that makes it decision time for Jeff Brown. I would, well, they're going to send the field goal team on. A little surprised by that. You're already ahead by three scores. The field goal still keeps it three scores. The touchdown makes it four. Yeah, I kind of it's a it's a difficult down and distance. Inside the two for sure I would go for it, but here in a game where points are at a premium, there might be some weather here in the second half. You feel pretty good about just getting something out of your first drive of the half. 20 yard attempt, and it is good by Brock Travelstead. So the lead grows to 20 to nothing for Louisville midway through the third quarter. The kickoff is a touchback. You know, I'm kind of going with, I, I agree, you know, Michigan's probably been the most impressive team when you look at margin of victory and that sort of thing. But I'm kind of going with Georgia. They're the champs. Right. Until you knock them out, you know, the impressive today, last we saw at least against Florida. Uh, I think we both had Oklahoma in the top six right. before, so we moved Oregon back up. Uh, they're impressive today, last we saw against Utah, and uh, it's hard to penalize them much for a very close loss against a terrific Washington team. Yeah, very close loss on the road, a game that they had several opportunities to win. So I think as of right now, when you look at the one-loss teams, the win on the road at Utah will be among the best in college football. So. It'd be really interesting to see how they kind of sort out those one loss. Teams. I agree with you. I think it is going to be Michigan because they're supposed to not factor in you know, previous years. It's supposed to be just about your body of work this year. Flag down prior to the snap. Play game, wow. play game. Offense. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Getting really ugly for Coach Elko. He hasn't had many days like this since he came to Durham. So tough to get a delay a game on your first snap of the half. I mean, that's just that's brutal. They had a 20 to 17 lead at the half last week at Florida State and did not score. Seminoles had 21 unanswered points in the fourth quarter to win. Of course, part of that was Leonard departed midway through the third quarter, and the offense really struggled without him. Now they're playing without two of their best offensive linemen. Their two best offensive linemen. Jordan Waters chopped down after a one yard gain. Benjamin Perry, a linebacker, made the tackle. This has to be torturing Graham Barton to have to watch his offensive line struggle like this without him. Yeah, and he is the key cog there on the left side as you see that big brace on his left leg. Played great. Throughout most of the game last week against uh, Jared Verse on the end of the line of scrimmage. And then, of course, you see Jacob Monk, their most experienced guy who plays so many positions for him, also in street clothes. 
The largest deficit of the season, the previous biggest, was at the end of the game, 18 points against Florida State in Tallahassee. Leonard under pressure all day, up for grabs. Each player had a shot at it. Number twos, Samir Hagens and Jarvis Brownlee. Stephen Heron put the pressure on. There is a flag down. A lot of contact there initially, but just a great play there. Holding, holding defense. defense. Number two. On Brownlee's down again. You wonder if it's the foot again, which has been bothering him for a while. You see him working here at the bottom of the screen. A lot of contact as he's engaged with Hagens. No question. It's definitely a good call as you see that right arm extend and grab the jersey. But how about the effort there by Hagens to dislodge what could have been an interception, but good call either way by the official. And he's grabbing at that lower leg again. Second year at Louisville for Brownlee after three at Florida State. But you can play five years and still be a junior in today's college football. Hopefully Brownlee will be all right. I mean this cornerback tandem with him and Quincy Riley among the best tandems in the ACC and Brownlee's been dealing with a foot issue for quite a while and there's Riley. We haven't mentioned his name because they don't throw often in his direction to be another reason why all day long it's appeared that Leonard can't find anybody open down the field. Quincy Riley transferred in here from Middle Tennessee State. Not highly recruited out of high school in Columbia, South Carolina. Played three years at Middle, had seven interceptions. Now in his second year here at Louisville, had five more. And he's big time as you see Brownlee now walking off, favoring that right side a little bit. Hopefully he'll be okay. And I know he's been playing through mm. a lot of pain throughout the course of the day. His second time being down on the field. And so it's kind of a bunion type thing. I don't know how you can play corner with a foot that's not at 100 percent. I mean the angles those guys have to take and how quickly they have to explode off one foot. I mean that's got to be remarkably painful. So they do have a veteran replacement Storm Duck. Played in 33 games over four years at North Carolina. First year at Louisville as a transfer. First and 10 after the penalty. Duke operating from its own 31. The field goal drive for Louisville took up almost half the quarter. Leonard again running for his life. And diving head first. There's another flag down thrown by the umpire. Gelati put the pressure on that forced Leonard to escape. It's a holding call against holding. Duke. Offense number 70, 10 yard penalty, first down. Scott Elliott, the center, transfer from Harvard. The coaches told us in the meeting yesterday. Elliot is smart. That kind of goes without saying when you played at Harvard and Duke. <laughs> not, not a necessary qualifier when you connect the dots. I think this whole team is really, really smart, which is why it's been so out of character to watch of the day, making some self-inflicted mistakes, pre-snap penalties, alignments, delay of games, things of that nature. Very out of character. First down at 18. Leonard again surrounded by Cardinals. The ball is on the ground. Are they going to rule that a catch? No. Finally the signal for an incomplete pass. Intended for Jordan Moore who couldn't hang on. This pass rush has really been relentless but that one's just got to be reeled in by Jordan Moore. Ball's a little high. Obviously there's a defender T.J. Quinn that's coming at him really hard. It was pretty close though. It was yeah. good effort at the end. It looked like he managed to scoop it up with his fingertips right before it hit the ground, but the action continues. Riley Leonard, pressure behind him, throws, and it's almost intercepted. Off the hands of another North Carolina transfer, Cameron Kelly. And really fortunate this one got tipped. 
because if Cameron Kelly doesn't intercept it, there's a real possibility that the corner that's squatting to the outside, that's number 10, Ben Perry. He might have been the guy that would have actually picked that one off. So not a great decision there from Riley Leonard. Even with a light drizzle that started at halftime, the enthusiasm not dampened for this Louisville crowd. Duke's two out of seven on third down. They try to run a wide receiver screen and it's intercepted. Gilbert Frierson picked it off. He was right there next to the intended receiver and Leonard threw it anyway. And it's perfectly played by Frierson. He sees immediately the receiver come inside on third and long. It's a tendency of Dukes to run those wide receiver tunnel screens. So Frierson paying a lot of attention, obviously, in their defensive meetings this week. He triggers on it, immediately reels it in, and sets up perfect opportunity for Louisville to punch it in. His first interception as a Louisville Cardinal. He had two in his five years playing at Miami. He's in his first year here. And he sets them up in great position at the 15 yard line. Joe R. Jordan again runs a long time without anybody close to him. There's a flag down. Trey Freeman ran him out of bounds. Holding offense number 67. 10 yard penalty. First down. John Paul Flores. Also well traveled, has played at Dartmouth, Virginia, and now here at Louisville. And you'll see him engage with the Duke defender, but as Jawar Jordan goes to the outside, you see Peebles there getting that shoulder grab. That's an easy call for the official, and it's a difficult block for John Paul Flores. You're working against Peebles, who's not very big, just 280 pounds, but he's really, really quick and was almost about to beat him to the outside. Flores in at left guard. For Michael Gonzalez, usually the starter there, he's moved out to left tackle. Willie Tyler not on the field at the moment. The handoff to the motion man. Handoff to Amari Huggins. Amari Huggins, Bruce with the touch, and he got them back inside. They're going to mark it right on the 20-yard line now. A pickup of six. Louisville playing without Renato Brown. With the offensive line prospering nonetheless, Austin Collins starting at right guard today, not very experienced, but holding his own. And Eric Miller's the right tackle, transferred from Purdue to stick with Coach Brom. Both Broms. Under five minutes to go, third quarter. Out of the pistol now. They faked the flea flicker. Looked like Jordan might have been grabbed by the face mask in the middle of that run. He stayed on his feet and got 11 tackled by Ryan Smith. This is a great job here by Ryan Smith. I mean he sees it immediately. He's one of the few Duke players to see it takes off with a decent pursuit angle and to run down to our Jordan from behind is extremely difficult. So Jordan up to 160 yards on 19 carries 8.4 better than his average coming in which was third in the country. Third down and six. Jordan. All right, fourth and two. Now what do you do? Anthony Nelson made the tackle. Another guy who has an undergraduate degree from Harvard and a graduate degree at Duke. Field goal team comes on. I know everyone wants Jeff Brom to, to go for it, but with how his defense is playing, being able to make it now a 23-point game versus a Possible 28 point game. I'd probably go for it. They've been running the ball really well. They run something to the perimeter as opposed to settling for the three right here. He's already two for two. This is from 24. He's three for three. This season, All State will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, All State. Important program since 2005. A happy homecoming here in Louisville. Not a happy road trip for Mike Elko and Duke battling key injuries. Especially on that offensive line without their two best. 
and only 100 yards of offense. 50 passing after they had just 76 in the air against Florida State last week and 107 against NC State two games ago. So they need to get the passing attack going. Yeah, and Riley Leonard just has not been great with some of his accuracy. He's been under duress an awful lot, too. He's taken some hits. His jersey was ripped at one point in the game. Just 6 of 15. Has had a drop or two as well, but he looks like he's moving. All he's right, moving though. fine. But I just wonder if the ankle's affecting how he pushes off that right foot to drive the ball. It's just the accuracy is not what we saw earlier in the year well, prior to the injury. A lot of pressure all day long, and when he has had time, it disappeared. He hasn't been able to find anybody open down the field. The kickoff from Travelstead is a touchback. It's time for the Aflac trivia question. We'll do that as soon as we tell you about the next stop on the F1 schedule, which is the Mexico City Grand Prix tomorrow afternoon. That's at 4 on ABC. Pre-race coverage begins at 2.30. Additional coverage on ESPN Plus and ESPN Deportes in English and Spanish at 3. Matt, you know, have you ever been to Mexico City? I have not. It's very, very high. It's like 8,000 <laughs> feet high. We did a Monday football game. I there. remember so that. I wonder yeah. if the cars go even faster. You know what? I bet they do. Wind I assume they do, right? Yeah, I think that's a fair guess. Riley Leonard had time, a little off target, diving attempt by Riley Samir Leonard Higgins. Passes. See just the frustration <laughs> amongst the Duke faithful and throw like that. I mean, Riley Leonard's going to play in the NFL, and that, that's not a very difficult throw, and he just misses it by two or three yards. That's interesting. You mentioned the NFL. That one's on target, caught by Jordan Moore. And he's chopped down after he picked up the first down by Quincy Riley. We asked, you asked, Coach Elkaby yesterday, you know, what did the NFL people tell you about Riley Leonard? He said, well, it's all over the place. Right. You know, some are really high on him, some not that high on him at all. Good pocket that time, throwing deep, and it is too long for Jordan Moore with Storm Duck in coverage. Looked like Moore slowed up a little bit late in that route. The ball was coming in his direction. It's a good job there by Moore, obviously, getting behind Storm Duck. It looked like just kind of put that arm out and didn't kind of run all the way through it. Love for Riley Leonard to put a little more air under well, it. He slowed down, him. and then I think Riley was anticipating he was going to run at full speed the whole time. You can see on the replay, definitely slowed down a little bit, then yep. tried to pick it back up. That was kind of odd right there. He kind of fooled his quarterback, and as a result, it was off the mark. Second and ten. Oh, boy. Everything is ugly right now. It's like they couldn't decide who was going to keep it. Leonard or Waters and Stephen Heron made the tackle. No game. Yeah, and it looked like Riley Lemmer was trying to pull this ball. You see him kind of try to pull it right there and put his foot in the ground to run. But Waters doubled over it and held on to it. So just a bad mesh point there. And by the way, Stephen Heron, who made the tackle, is the transfer from Stanford, and they call him Stanford Steve. We have the original <laughs> Stanford Steve here on ESPN in game day. What a great job he's doing. Oh, the percentage on the picks. I, the last time I looked. <laughs> well, we don't need to talk about that for a, for a smart guy, but I have a feeling he'll pick it up as the year goes along. Leonard lost the football. He stood there for a long time. The ball popped out. Jermaine Lole knocked it out. And Louisville thinks they have the football. The officials have a football. It's Duke ball. Recovery by Duke. You see Lole right there engaged with Brian Parker obviously filling in for the left tackle Graham Barton. He gets beat inside and there's really nothing that Riley Leonard could do at that point. Routes are trying to develop downfield. He's getting ready to cut it loose. We went around Brian Parker the fill in left tackle. Fourth sack. For Louisville. And as we mentioned a few times Duke had given up five all year. Fewest in the ACC and fifth fewest in the country coming in 48 yard punt by Porter Wilson and now it's time for the Aflac trivia question Duke leads the ACC in scoring defense 13.9 entering today. Uh, 
obviously that's going to go up. When was the last time Duke finished the season allowing the fewest points in the ACC? Oh, man. By the way, that 13.9, fifth best in the country starting today. Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State, Air Force. The only teams better in scoring defense. That's the most important defensive stat. And it's remarkably better than the year before Mike Elko arrived two seasons ago. <laughs> Plumber on target, fresh out of bounds after a seven yard gain. Do you know the answer? Last I do. Time Duke finished the season allowing the fewest points in the ACC. Am I allowed to say never? Oh, 1972. Okay. The answer to the Aflac trivia question is 1972. I would have had no chance there. Would you have no. gotten that one? No. No. no Unless you're going to look that up. <laughs> you know, if you're going to Google and cheat, which Todd Blackledge used to do all the time. Really? Wow. Probably still does over at that other network. I don't know if they have athletic <laughs> trivia questions over there. Todd, a, a man of great character, but uh, a cheater on the athletic trivia question, which is okay. Isaac Garendo, the Wisconsin transfer, taken out of bounds by Jeremiah Lewis. Who started his career at Duke, transferred to Northwestern for one year, and then came back to Duke. It's a 16 yard game. Yeah, an excellent job by the right side of the offensive line right there, displacing a couple of Duke defenders Austin Collins at right guard, Eric Miller at right tackle. They just kind of parted the Red Sea right there, and there was a big, big gap for Garendo to shoot through. And he's their power back. End of the third quarter. That's what I did. Yards of total offense, and it's on its way to being four unless Duke erupts offensively here in the fourth quarter. They have 107 yards of offense all day. Isaac Garendo. And off to Isaac Garendo. Ahead for three. Well, this is the fourth meeting all time. Louisville's won the previous three, and they have put it on Duke. 149 to 39. How about the last time they played? Which was 2021 in Durham. Louisville won 62 22. Of course, that was an 0 8 year in conference, 3 9 overall for Duke. Malik Cunningham threw for 303 and five touchdowns and ran for 224 and two touchdowns. It might have been his best performance in a Louisville uniform. He was incredible that Might night. have been. <laughs> I mean, he was unbelievable. If you want to offer up a better one, <laughs> we'll take it. He did something that's only been done one other time in FBS history. Those are the numbers. You see the note on the bottom. Second player, the other to do it. You want to guess? This is you a whiffed on the uh, Lamar Jackson? No. Uh, good guess though. Marcus Tuiasopo of Washington wow. against I would, Stanford I would in not. 1999. I didn't realize that Tuiasopo had that kind of wheels. I didn't realize he was mm -hmm. a runner like that. He did. <sighs> that guy wasn't bad either, running and throwing. Yeah. But he never did 300, 200, and then you add in the the seven touchdowns. Johnny and I just probably didn't run for 200. <laughs> but he was pretty good. Here's Plummer. He's pretty good. Hasn't had a do a lot today. They leaned heavily on the ground. Trey Freeman made the tackle, a five yard gain. Plummer's from Gilbert, Arizona, but as a kid, divided his time between Arizona and Iowa. He used to spend the summers in Iowa with his dad. His parents were divorced. He is a Diamondback fan. He's also a big Chicago Cubs fan because when they were in Iowa in the summers they'd go to Wrigley Field to watch the Cubs. He's not highly recruited out of high school in Gilbert Arizona. Hodges punts he's punted a couple of times today the first two of his career so they're getting travel step the punting duties off today. Hodges might want to keep that job with that one. Don't forget to go to ESPN.com slash Allstate Playoff Predictor. Check out your team's chances to make the CFP. Vermont about to win its fifth in a row on homecoming day. Jacquez Moore, the running back. Riley Leonard still in there. He faked and ran for a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Ashton Gelati again. The one yard gain for Leonard. Such a great competitor. We talked to Coach Elko yesterday. He said he really won this team over 
with his competitiveness. He's a tough guy and he showed it today. As the last several weeks, I mean, playing through injury, not at 100%, still battling with his guys. Whistles stop the play. This can't soon end start. soon enough for the Leonard. Chad and Heather. Pretty sure that's Chad on the left and Heather on the right. <laughs> They're back on the four yard line. With 12 minutes to go. Some of these fans have left, but it's always a lively crowd here at LNN Federal Credit Union Stadium. First year of that name. Thankfully, they abbreviate it LNN Stadium. Calhoun, the catch, his fifth of the day. The 233rd of his career, fourth all time at Duke as a fifth year senior from Greenville, South Carolina. He's just short of the first down. I know it's obviously the time is of the essence in a three possession game. Yeah, I mean, they, they you got to go up for the it. operation here. Yeah, you got to go for it. You got two downs to get it, even though it's inside your own 20. Well, we're going to chew up a lot of the play clock here with. A lot of shifting. And now motion from Jordan Moore. They snapped it with four. And the play dropped for a loss. Josh Minkins. The veteran safety junior from right here in Louisville out of Ballard High School. And a great job. You'll see him here kind of on the right corner of your screen. He's in run support, sees it immediately, goes up, makes a play behind the line of scrimmage. And as a result, Duke is sending their punt unit out. Surprised by this, I mean, you really think you could stop them and then still have three possessions to maybe make up the difference? I'd probably go for it here, man. Timeout. Louisville. Timeout. You wonder if they think there might be a fake punt. Thinking as you are, that you know Duke really needs the football. Tough to punt down by 23 with 10 20 to go. Defense is struggling as it is, giving up about six yards of play. I think that you're going to get a three and out, get the ball back, and still have plenty of time for possession. To close the gap is pretty unlikely. It's interesting. You're watching Mike Elko in these two years on the sideline. He was a tremendous defensive coordinator. That's why he got the job. And a lot of guys, once they get a head coaching job, they're still very involved in that side of the ball from which they came. Uh, he really lets the coordinators coach. He's very involved, obviously, in the preparation of the week and offering suggestions. But he really is primarily interested in managing the game. Down the distance, when to punt, when to go for it, using timeouts, that sort of thing. And I agree with you. I mean, what do you have to lose going for it on fourth and one? You lose by 23 or 30. You oh, well now, of course, right on cue, it's not a very good punt either. Landed on the Duke side of the field. It's one of those days. And Mike Elko hasn't had many of them. Just a 33 yard punt. Big day for Jawar Jordan, the career high 162. They're relishing that development here in Louisville. Five out of eight games this year. He's rushed for 100. Of course, he didn't have a chance to do that last time out two weeks ago against Pitt when he carried only two times early in the game. You wonder if he regrets not trying to give it more of a go. You know, it was a wet field. It was a sloppy day. He watched his teammate, starting right guard, Renato Brown, blow up his knee in the pregame warm-up on the field. Yeah. It's a bummer. He was unavailable. Because I think if he plays, I mean, they're a different team with him on the field. Yeah, man. They, they easily might have won the game. That was a huge loss. They had to throw it 52 times, which was Plummer's season high. Plummer had trouble with the snap and fell on it for a four-yard loss. Started to mention he's from Gilbert, Arizona. Was not highly recruited out of Gilbert High School, but one of the defensive coaches on his high school staff was Brandon Johnson, who played here at the University of Louisville. 
and then went on to the NFL. And he sent some film to Jeff Brom at Purdue. He said, hey, we think we have a pretty good quarterback here. You should take a look at him. He is sacked there. So they recruited him. He wound up going to Purdue. He was there for four years. He was kind of in and out as the starter. Uh, gradually, in his last year there, he lost the starting job to Aiden O'Connell, who really came on as a terrific quarterback. He knew he wasn't going to be the starter in 2022. So he transferred to Cal. Had a productive year, but wanted to go back someplace where he could win. And he wanted to be reunited with Jeff Brom. Playing a pro-style offense. So Coach Brom can be fiery, but he's calmed down a little bit over the years. <laughs> I think it's cool too. It shows his maturity to, you know, he didn't hold a grudge against Jeff Brom for going with Aiden O'Connell. He shows maturity, saying, hey, this is the guy I initially picked. I want to finish my career with him. And some guys, man, would have a hard time disengaging from what went down at the previous school. But he said, I wanted to come and be part of this program. And he's done a great job. Well, it was Jeff Brom who helped him transfer to Cal. And Jack Plummer said, I understood. Aiden O'Connell had earned the job. You know, he wound up being drafted by the Raiders. And he said, I guess he's still fiery. <laughs> As the coach goes after Jack a little bit. He had a connection to Jeff Brom to Bill Musgrave, who's the offense coordinator at Cal. Set him up to go there. And Jeff Brom said, it's a good example of why you, know, you maintain relationships right. with people. They needed a quarterback after Malik Cunningham left. Hodges punts again. Probably earn the starting punter job with this performance today. No reason to continue to have Travelstead do everything. 48 yard punt. Six yard return by Calhoun. 8.03 to go. Louisville on its way to seven. As if this was a close game, he described himself as a servant leader, saying, I just see myself as a football player, not a quarterback. I'm just one of the guys putting my body on the line for my team. He said, I, If I'm not in a wheelchair, if I'm not in a wheelchair, I'm playing no matter what, John. Yeah, he has battled his way through without a lot of help trying to get it to Jordan Moore the pass incomplete there is a flag down back behind the line of scrimmage storm duckhead coverage and it's against Duke holding offense number 73 after this is a goal penalty first down Jake Hornerbrook the right tackle transfer from Stanford where he was a guard Started 23 games for the Cardinal. When they go to the transfer portal, they go to Harvard, <laughs> right. Stanford. Right. And Mike Elko optimistic going forward because he really believes that they position themselves now with this success as the number one you know, academic school. If you are a high academic football player, you want to go where you can get the best education and play high football. You know, that used to be Stanford. Uh, Duke can make the claim for that right now. Calhoun can't make the catch. I mean, you look at the other schools that would kind of fall under that category. Northwestern, they've been really, really average. Stanford's been remarkably average for quite a while. Vanderbilt's been down. Wake Forest has had some ups and downs, but it's come back to earth a little bit of late. So I think without question, they can certainly bang the drum for those guys that enter the portal that want to continue their academic excellence to find a home at Duke. If they're going to keep it going, they'll have to recruit well. There are a lot of veteran players using up their eligibility this year for Duke. They're going to have a lot of people to replace, especially on both lines. Leonard launches one dig, and it is caught. Jordan Moore with Devin Neal in coverage. And Leonard hobbling as he tries to hurry to the line of scrimmage after a 47-yard play. Yeah, and a great job on scramble drill, too. Jordan Moore turning up field. Leonard trying to put everything he had into it, and you saw a little bit favoring that right ankle. I thought there was a push off as they uh, looked at the replay and now flags fly movement before the snap 47 yard play they had 120 all day late snap by the center several players in the offensive line false start five yard penalty first down this will be very disappointing unless they pull off a miraculous comeback here for Mike Elko he talked yesterday you know, he's not one of those coaches who talks about, well, let's take it one game at a time. He said, hey, we went out. We're going to play in the ACC championship game. We control our own destiny. Jeff Brom yesterday said, you know, I'm a kind of a one game at a time guy. 
And when we asked him, well, do you think you have a good enough team to win the conference tonight? He said, we will learn more about that. I'll know the answer tomorrow. I think he's going to say yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how you could come away from this performance and not be really, really encouraged. Disappointed about the loss at Pitt. You know, they were a big favorite coming off the win against Notre Dame. That's Jordan Waters carrying the ball. He said it didn't feel like they were flat. And if you watched that game at Pitt two weeks ago, they went right down the field and scored the first, very impressively, the first possession of the game. It's just the turnovers that derailed them. But Jeff Brom also said, yeah, you could say, ah, geez, we have one loss, maybe we shouldn't have. But he said, we probably have three wins that we easily could have lost. Right. Too. No doubt. I mean, the Georgia Tech game, week one, a couple others that were very close, but they found a way here on multiple different weeks to find their best stuff when they had to have it against Notre Dame obviously and then today in a pivotal game in the ACC standings they've maybe put together their best defensive performance of the year. Seven quarters there's a ball down the sideline batted down by Devin Neal the transfer from Baylor. This was a great job by Neal you see him just undercutting that wheel route to the outside getting a good angle on it and putting a hand up to break it up talk about honesty in our coaching meetings yesterday and we talked to Ron English who's great in those meetings he said Devin Neal transferred from Bailey said when he first got here I thought he was awful he said and then he just got better and better and better plays hard he's very physical played three years at Baylor Leonard in trouble he took a hit up high and there is a flag the ball dropped by John Tavis Robertson. But it looked like Leonard got hit in the face by Ashton Gelati. Holding offense number 53 10 yard penalty. Well that down. wasn't what the call was it was for a hold on Brian Parker. This is so hard on the redshirt freshman who's filling in, not very experienced. You're engaged with one of the best defense events in America in Ashton Gelati, and you're engaged forever. As you can see, grabbing that jersey with the left hand as Leonard tries to escape. But you can see here Gelati getting away with one as he definitely grabs Leonard's face mask as he tries to escape. It could have been. The penalty but against Gelati is not third and 20 taking down to six minutes to go Leonard down the middle and off the hands of Samir Hagens and incomplete and the punt unit is coming back on this one's really close flutters just a hair out of Riley Leonard's hands but that's one that you would hope Samir Hagens would be able to reel in it's third and super long 18 19 20 yards receivers got both hands on the ball you got to be able to reel that one in it's pretty well thrown ball in tight coverage there by Riley Leonard seventh punt for Porter Wilson He had punted only 23 times all year in Before seven snap, games. Timeout was called by Louisville. 30 second timeout. Oh boy. 23 nothing. <laughs> that should be a good one. Who are, you, who are you liking that one? I like Tyson Fury. I will never, ever pick against Tyson Fury. He's unbelievable. He. <laughs> Seven foot to move the way he does, or whatever it is. He's he's something. Wilson's punt rolls down to the two. Well, it's going to be a tough day for Duke against Louisville. When you think of these two teams, they're great basketball programs. We flash back to the 1986 national championship game, as I like to call it, the night. Jay Billis held never nervous Purvis Ellis into 42 points. <laughs> so Louisville won their second well, national championship. It was actually 25. Well, it wasn't effort by 11. Billis. Yeah. What a, just he was a, just the most a, outstanding player of the game. Yeah, just a double double. 25 yeah. and 11. I'd say that's pretty good. Jay's a very good natured about it. There's a reason why he was never nervous. <laughs> At least that night. <laughs> we love Jay. He's undoubtedly not enjoying this, is it? Proud and prominent Duke alum. Maurice Turner just trying to give them a little breathing room. 
Nick Morris Jr. made the tackle. Jack Plummer's thrown it only 16 times after he threw it around 52 times in that loss at Pitt. They had to throw it without Jawar Jordan. He'll be finishing his college career at the end of this semester. Graduated from Purdue in three and a half years. Maurice Turner got swung down. Degree in business. He was in the MBA program at Purdue. He would have gotten his MBA at Purdue if he had stayed, but he transferred to Cal. And Cal said, I'm sorry, we're not taking you in our MBA program. <laughs> if I were Jack, he's a much nicer guy. Yes. Well, then you don't have a quarterback. Yes. Because, you know, I want to be in your MBA program. In which they'd probably say, that's fine. Uh, we'll, be with, we'll be okay without a quarterback. That might be Cal's approach in that spot. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have no First idea. Cal coming to this conference. Uh, he still got he got a couple of certificates from Cal. I don't know what that means. Yes. He gives certificates. Certificate participation. Certificates. Participation trophies. And he's going to leave here with a master's in sports administration in December and then go get ready for the NFL draft. And they think he'll coach someday. Or he's turning the ball. As a matter of fact, Jeff Brom said he might almost be too smart. <laughs> right. Sometimes he overthinks situations. Timeout. Duke. The first time out of the half. 30 second time out. What a likable young man, though, in our visit yesterday. Uh, rain is coming down hard now. Was it Judge Smales who said, Don't you people have homes? <laughs> <laughs> ABC has a Pac 12 meeting tonight in prime time. <laughs> they're, they're great fans. They're going to watch their team win to the end. 7 30, Colorado against number 23, UCLA. Kind of a dramatic turnaround for Coach Sanders and the Buffs. Defense has been a little shaky all season long, but the offense has come back to earth just a hair. I mean, performance a couple weeks ago against Stanford was pretty eye opening with the deficit that Stanford was able to claw back from. And UCLA, man, they are really tough on defense. So, better be ready to block them tonight. Very short punt. And the fair catch made by Calhoun. Interesting they put Brock Travelstead back in to punt that time. It's no secret, Ashton Jelani's the best player for the Louisville Cardinals. The reason why he's a mid-season All-American, according to some publications. Move him around, he's against the left tackle. Now he's against the right tackle. Beats him around the edge this time and drops Riley Leonard for a sack. And then you move him inside. He's up against Mo McIntyre. Forces Leonard up in the pocket. You see that initial surge. And, and now he sets things up for his teammate. He breaks to the outside, engages with the left tackle, Brian Parker, and then ultimately closes to make the hit. He's been all over the place, and it's going to be at least all ACC, as you see what Louisville's done defensively these last few weeks, playing at a remarkably high level. I'm looking very much like a contender. This is Grayson Loftus. Welcome to college football. He's hit as he throws. There is a flag down. And uh, they're actually going to blow it dead. Taufik Thomas wound up with it after Cameron Wilson popped the ball out. But fortunately for Loftus, there was a false start, or his first play in college football was going to be a turnover. Nine penalties for Duke. There's Loftus, true freshman from Gaffney, South Carolina. And Coach Elko made it a point to tell us last night if we go to the backup quarterback and it's not Beelan, it's not because we're benching him. Beelan has been battling an upper body injury for several weeks and he's actually in a rougher shape than Riley Leonard. So if we have to go to the backup, it's going to be Loftus. And that's a beautiful looking throw. And a catch by Jordan Moore for a first down. 6'3", 205 is Loftus. Yeah, he spoke really highly of, of Loftus' ability to drive the football. He's got a big arm. I think he has a really bright future. Not as mobile as Riley Leonard, but a really nice pure passer. Throws it out wide for a short completion to Jalen Coleman. There's Beelan, who started against NC State, led them to victory, and then played the last quarter and a half last week at Florida State. He has a big arm. 
Loftus, that's a great looking spiral, and it's a little bit too high for Jeremiah Hazley. Loftus was an uh, incoming freshman in January. There's a flag down. He arrived early at Duke to immerse himself in the university and the football program. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number 71, 15 yard penalty. The down counts, third down. Maurice McIntyre who started every game this year at left guard. It's his 28th career start. Really the, the best remaining offensive lineman they have without Graham Barton and Jacob Monk. He's an imposing force there, kind of lost his pool, it sounds like, at the end of that play. And Fortunately, he just has been surrounded by a lot of inexperience. That offensive line hasn't had much of a positive impact on this game. Loftus rated a three-star prospect by ESPN.com. And the 24th best pro-style quarterback in high school football in the country last year. Pretty impressive so far. On target there to Jordan Moore. Helped his... Uh, High school team, the Gaffney Indians, to a state championship in South Carolina in 2021. He's three out of four for 31 yards. Leonard finished nine out of 23 for 121 and an interception. He was sacked four times. Hasn't been sacked more than two in any game coming in. Over the middle and almost intercepted by Trey Franklin. And they turn it over on downs. Leonard, his day done. He rushed 10 times for 13 yards. There's the sack totals come off the rushing yardage. He had some good runs. And they're looking like they're going to be shut out for the first time since that awful 2021 season when they went 0-8 in conference. Lost by a margin of 29 points per game. Mike Helko will arrive the next year. And immediately improved everything, particularly the defense. They were 127th in the country in scoring defense the year before he got to Durham. They entered today fifth. He's done a terrific job, and it's really an uncharacteristic performance from Duke. They've really not handled the line of scrimmage well on either side, and a lot of credits deserved to Louisville with how they've performed. Durendo threw a pretty good hole. Elko, 46 years old. There are the numbers we were talking about. From almost 40 points per game in a three and nine year in 2021, the last year under David Cutcliffe, who had a nice run in Durham. It got away a little bit at the end, obviously. It's a fifth in scoring defense. And you know, they've only given up 23 points today. Right. On a day when the offense didn't give them any help at all. Yeah, one of them, I mean, Riley Leonard interception. I mean, that was knocking on the door, and they, they held him obviously to a field goal on that drive. But either way, I mean, it hasn't been an atrocious performance defensively. They just had a tough time stopping the run against Jawar Jordan, which is nothing to be ashamed of. Durendo has the first down. Meanwhile, will be the second shutout of the year for the Louisville defense. They blanked Murray State here in the second game of the year, 56 to nothing. I think there's one takeaway that I have from this game, though, is that Louisville's the real deal along the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively. Not just, I mean, we know Jawar Jordan's amazing, and you get him in space, he's going to be great. But how often did he hit the hole and wasn't touched until he's five, six yards downfield today? I mean, the offensive line was terrific against a very stout defensive front, and then the amount of disruption they were able to cause with their defensive line, I mean, that was ultimately what determined the outcome. Six straight quarters without scoring now for Duke. Dorendo carries. So here's the remaining schedule for Louisville. Remaining a one-loss team in the conference. They'll go to seven and one overall, four and one in the league. Virginia Tech this is the other one-loss team along with North Carolina now. Hokies rapidly improving. But that, that's a pretty favorable schedule for Louisville the rest of the way. There's a real strong possibility they'll be favored in every game down the stretch. And, team, there's one thing we've learned this year is it's really tough to play them 
here at home. So the one road trip will be to Miami, which is an average atmosphere at best. So they should be in really good shape down the stretch. So after a 4 0 start, Duke has lost three out of four. They entered today ranked for the eighth week in a row. First time that had happened since 1957. You wonder if they'll stay in the rankings next week. Here's Molly McGrath. Dwar, you were limited in practice this week, but you were dominant with a career high day. How? Uh, just uh, staying true to who I am, uh, believing in God, uh, just getting that good treatment in. I, we had an off week. Uh, we just ba bounced back from uh, two weeks ago, and we just came out here, uh, had to prove something. How's your body and your